It's the talk of San Diego. Hi, I'm Beth, and this is the talk of San Diego. We are here at the Wings Over Gillespie Air Show, and I am standing under one huge Navy airplane. Today we're going to talk to some of the pilots, Navy divers, aviation authors. So come on and let's check it out. Hello, this is Beth with the talk of San Diego. And I'm here at the Wings over Gillespie Field Air Show. And can you tell us who I'm here with? Indy Two Lemons. Justin Lemons, yeah. And you are part of the U.S. Navy Divers? I am. Okay. And you guys are going to give us kind of a little rundown of what you are doing here, right? Yeah, we're going to go into our bus, show you what we dive with, show you what we use to work when we dive, what okay. we're going to do the air show with. Yeah, absolutely. Lead away. Just come on. So this is the bus we use every day when we dive. So we're in San Diego and we work on ships. Anything we do, we use this bus. This is our transport. This is a total mobile diving operation right here. So this is our FAS, this is our air system, these are the racks we use. We charge these racks up, we use this for the air, this is what we use. Okay. 5,000 PSI we charge it to and we feed the air up. So this is for the diver. So this thing pulls up next to the water or does it go on top of a boat or wherever you No, guys this stays exactly where it's at. Well, no, the whole piece, this whole large bus, does it? What we do is we pull up right next to the boat as close as we can get okay. to where we're going to dive. So that our hoses will reach our diving operation, and that's what we do. We park right next to us, okay. and we dive. Let's let him get a good look back in here. All right, and what are some of the reasons you guys are diving? You know, we do a number of things from uh, hole repairs, inspections, prop repairs, prop replacements, APU replacements. We can do anything. Anything under a ship that needs to be done. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's welding, inspections, replacements, does not matter. We'll do it. We're Navy divers. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. So everything else in here is pretty much, this is just for the guys. It's all gear. It's a bunch of wetsuits that all the guys wear. We kind of keep our gear on here so it's always available when we're about ready to dive. Okay. And uh, these are the hats we dive right here. Okay, that's neat. How yeah. heavy is that? Pretty heavy. It's about 30, I don't know, 32 pounds, something like that. Oh dear. Okay. It's a KM 37. Pretty heavy. That's what we put in our hands. We like to hold it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That can't be so, safe. Okay. That's wow. what we wear. Surface supplied air. We go down and uh, we do work. Of course, you gotta wear this so that we can stay down for a longer time and actually do work. You know, you can't imagine trying to do work on a scuba, especially if you get a long job. It's just okay. not. What is a long time underwater? Um, you know, some of these guys are down for six hours. Sometimes they're down for an hour, two hours. Depends on the job. Okay. One diver may be down for a long time, but what we'll do is we'll switch out divers. So we may have a, a red, a green, and a yellow, depending how long the diver's been down. We'll just switch them out. If another diver needs to get in, it's been down too long, we'll just switch them out. Boom. Come okay. up top side, okay. clean the hat, put the hat back on the next guy, put them right back in, continue oh. work. So okay. we can continue work around the clock. As long as we've got the divers to do it. Gotcha. And then what is the depth when you guys are diving? Um, you know, some of these guys have been at 225. I think most of the depth is about 190. Our average depth here, yeah, in feet. Um, most of us dive here in San Diego is about 40 to 50 feet underneath the boat to work. So it's it's not deep diving, but it's technical work. It was being done. So you're not doing salvage, you're doing ship husbandry. So of course that keeps us a little bit shallow because we have to work underneath. So, Okay. You know, after that, we come up here to the console area. Get all kinds of stuff out. We're doing an air show, so um, this is our assembly. This is our air, air rack assembly. This is how we actually give air to the divers. Red, green, you know, yellow. This is how we do it. We have controls to where we can give them air. We can switch from primary to secondary in case we have contaminated air. Oh, okay. So we give them air. We watch our pressures while we're diving. We watch our main pressures on our big flask okay. to make sure we have sufficient air. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We can dial it up, dial it down, however we feel fit for the depth we're at. Hmm. Okay, and what are you guys doing here at the air show this weekend? 
know, we're gonna put it on a little show for all the family and people, uh, just showing them how we dive, getting in the water, write, write their name, put a little tic-tac-toe. Showing them what it's like to have a Navy diver in a hat down there working underwater. Gotcha. You guys are gonna be right up there. We are. We're gonna get right up there, we're gonna enter the water, and uh, you know, some guys will stay in for a while. If they wanna get traded out, we'll trade out, but the guy can stay down as long as he wants. They'll just get down there and write letters to people or tic-tac-toe or play with the kids, you know, stuff like that. And uh, it's just to show them what it looks like with a hard hat on your head. Sure. Yeah, the big, heavy, 35 right. half weight. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Thank you very much for your service and the tour. And once again, this is Beth with the Talk of San Diego. Check out this big bad boy. This is a Grumman TBM Avenger. Three passengers, goes up to 275 miles per hour. You're not gonna find it on Top Gun. But if you've seen the TV show Baba Black Sheep, it was on that show. Let's see what else we can find. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beth and we're here at Wings Over Gillespie Air Show. And I'm sitting here with Mark, an aviation author. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the work you've done, Mark? Well, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm an aviation writer. I've been doing it for a few years, writing for several national aviation magazines. And Wings Over Gillespie is sort of my home turf. I'm a member of Air Group, one of the commemorative Air Force, which is a national organization of uh, warbirds and vintage aircraft restorers and collectors. And Musket, my guide dog, and I go to a lot of these air shows, and we meet veterans, we meet pilots, I write stories about them. Some of the aircraft that are at the show are planes that I've written about, including Sentimental Journey, the B-17G, okay. and Made in the Shade, the B-25, and D-Day Doll, the C-53. They're, uh, they're all planes I've written in and written about. Wow. So collectively, you've written quite a few books. Not so many <laughs> books, but a lot of articles. Okay, yeah, got you. Magazine. Okay, a lot of print work. Um, and what got you into aviation? Like, when did that start? Oh, it goes way back to when I was a kid. I liked to build model airplanes and so on, but as my eyesight started to deteriorate, I got to the point where I couldn't build planes anymore. I didn't know what I was building. And I started <laughs> building, I started hanging around with the real thing. Okay. And I, I wanted to meet veterans and talk to people who'd actually experienced these things for real. And this venue right here that we're in is the honored veteran venue. We will have almost two dozen World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam era aviation veterans here. Um, so the public can meet them and talk to them and learn their story. Very nice, very nice for you to put that together. Well, my friend Linda is the one who really did most of the work. I'm her wingman. <laughs> her wingman. Okay. And then you also just mentioned that you had just finished a book in regards to musket here. Yes. yes. I uh, had had musket with me for 10 years. He's been my faithful, loving, loyal guide dog. Um, and so many wonderful things have happened. He's met so many incredible people. I decided to write a book about it. Aww. And it was published last year. It is called Confessions of a Guide Dog, The Blonde Leading the Blind. And that should tell you right there, it's tongue-in-cheek humor. <laughs> okay. And it's available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Okay, Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Is there any kind of humor in the aviation publications or more as an informational or it's information I'm adding to the public record. I'm adding to the historical record by what I write, and that's something that I take very seriously. But humor can't help but be inserted into it because they are old pilots, they're a bold pilot, they're very few old, old pilots. And other phrases like takeoff is optional, landing is mandatory. <laughs> okay. Those things crop up quite a bit in aviation the aviation world and yes. pilots. Well, they have an, an elan, an ethos about them, and I like to tell their stories. I like to find the stories that nobody knows about mm -hmm. and tell the stories. And, and I'm not only about the plane they flew, but the, the service they did for our country and combat. And, you know, and, and pay them respect. Show them that we really appreciate what they did. For Very us. remarkable. Very remarkable. Um, well, thank you for taking some time with us today. I'm glad to do that. Um, so. Once again, this is Mark, and I'm Beth with the Talk San Diego. Already mentioned right? and when he came with us. Good. This is Johnny. Oh my God! What the? Ow! 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 Talk of Ow San Diego, and Ow. 
and the guy told me, oh, there were plenty of places to hit my head. Look at this, there are dials on the floor. We're in like a B-50 something, I don't know. But you gotta be like a midget to get in here. But, oh, look at this, oh, there's more airplane up there. Oh, we're gonna see where the, where the gunners gunned, oh. Here's where the, the gunners, whoa. This is, if you're in a hurry, this is not the airplane to get into. Look at this, dials and knobs and everything. Look at here are the stairs we just came up. Well, I just came up and I uh, got the seatbelts there. Check the, the vector vector. There's the view that the pilot would get if he was sitting behind the gears of this. This is a Boeing. Of course, you probably already knew that from the taillights. And there's the bomber. He sits up there. He's the gunner, I guess. And there's the window. A little window seat and a kosher meal, please. All right, and then we've got the jump seat. Oh, didn't make the flight? Okay, you can ride in the jump seat. I don't know about this. I don't know about this, because this is really, really tight. And I'm not even gonna say what I would normally say after I made a return mark about that, but, oh. Look at this. And I get worn out putting my socks on. Look at how narrow this is. Fat people do not apply this. Oh my god, oh, oh, bombs to the left of me, bombs to the right, here I am, stuck in, and that's when they drop, what, see the doors open up, and they drop the bombs. At us, left and right, partner, look at this, actual bombs, oh, oh, careful, be careful, be careful, here's coach. Okay, no, that's good. A uh, coach, uh, a loser here. Oh, look at this, look at this, look. <laughs> you can see out, and then you can see in. Now well, that's pretty cool. And there's a little hatch there, don't, don't hit the handle, because the vandals broke the handle. And look at it, look. Oh, there's the turret, the ball turret. And here, oh, I'm glad they got slip resistant stuff here on the floor. And look, there's a gun, and there's that girl that said she didn't want to go out with me. So, let's see if we can turn this gun. There she is. Oh, yeah. Out of range. Oh, look at that, see? We've got this thing here for day and night. Day and night shooting. That's always good. And you got the little reflector here. Oh, look at this. Put in a quarter. I don't believe it. That's how the government makes their money. Okay, you get 15 minutes of gunfire for a quarter. Look here, they kind of lay people down. Lay me down. Oh, look, here's another gun. Gunner to the left, gunner to the right. So that's pretty cool. Look, there's the rest of the stuff. The, uh, the gunner gets in there, the, the tail gunner. Yeah, well, maybe not the tail gunner. Because look, we still got... Oh, look, 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 look. Huh? Look at that, huh? This is where they get the expression, the whole nine yards. Because normally bullets are stored in a nine yard configuration. And when you give somebody the whole nine yards, you're giving them nine rounds of these bad boys right here. Huh? You see one of these bad boys coming at you, you don't have time to, oh, hey, I wonder if I can pull one of these out. Oh, well, maybe not. They're watching me anyway on the talk of San Diego. That's what they're doing. Oh, look, fire extinguisher. Just in case. Just in case. And look, just three steps down to get the hell out of here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh please, oh please, oh please, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. That's what old people say when they walk so slow. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. And look at that, we got all these other planes to go through. So we're gonna be here for a little while. In the meantime, this is Johnny with the talk of San Diego. Hello, this is Beth. And as you can see, I'm here at Wings over Gillespie at the air show. And I'm sitting here with Rich. And why don't you tell us what is your role that you play here at the air show? Oh, you want them alphabetical or in size of crisis <laughs> matter? Uh, <laughs> there are, there are a, a lot of lot of things that have to be done, and you become very aware of them as you get to near uh, start time of the show. Lots of little details. You can plan all you want, but uh, it's like I guess it's like combat. Once you uh, once you hit the the combat starts, the plan goes out the window. But it is very well organized, and uh, we spread out uh, some of the disciplines and uh, responsibilities. So I primarily, in the umbrella of marketing, 
uh, which includes a lot of different things. I would like to have a ticket boss and a list boss and a poster boss and a graphics boss and a webmaster and all of those different things could all come into play, especially online. That's where things are going, where media is going and so on. And how visually rich all of this is, is really a great opportunity for some things online. We're we'll kind of going that direction. We may have vintage aircraft, but we're trying to be in the modern world as far as uh, marketing goes. And that's kind of where my challenge is. So everyone that comes out to the air shows, they get here, everything's going, running, having fun. It just doesn't put itself together. You no, the not behind the scenes. Well, got, yeah, I guess uh, I was called the shadow soldier, where uh, you don't know how the things get done, but they're a problem at night and in the morning they're solved. Okay, you're That's the problem, okay, problem yeah. solver behind the scenes. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay, and what are some of the things that can, people can come out and do and see here tomorrow? Well, what's uh, exciting is uh, you think about the inventory that's here. These are these are national treasures. A lot of these aircraft are the only ones flying in the world. What's unique about this uh, and part of our quest here is uh, flying museums. Because you can go, if I make an analogy, it's like, would you rather go to some musty old uh, museum and see stuffed animals, or would you rather go to a zoo and see them alive, meant, uh, living the way they're meant to? Very good analogy. And, uh, yeah. These airplanes, when you see them, you feel them, there's an emotional attachment to these aircraft, because you can touch them, you can feel them, you can see them. When you get inside of them, you can start seeing how they work, because the level of technology you can understand. Uh, it's like an automobile. If you look at a car, a classic car in the 50s or 60s, you can open the hood and you can figure out, okay, I'll get a screwdriver and wrench and I can take this thing apart. Now you get into a car and it's just all these black boxes and yeah. plastic and you don't know where to start. But a young person can look at an aircraft and begin to understand how the mechanics work. They can begin to see, oh, this wire goes here, this tube goes there, this engine's here, this connects there. And that kind of is the educational process and exposure we want to give kids because nowadays they learn everything on the screen and they learn everything that they expect to be entertained all the time. So we're trying to stimulate that, 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 that epiphany like, ah, that's how an airplane stays in the air. Okay. Oh, that's what that means. Okay. So that's, that's part of, part of it, what it is, is to get them excited about something that's new and different. Okay. And I, for someone like myself, uh, originally from out of town, is there history to the air show here? Oh, well, this is the 17th air show. Uh, Wings of the Gillespie Show, so it's been around uh, a while, and uh, it's uh, different management, different people over the, over the years, but it's a tradition that, as you can see, is, is it's very popular with a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people have come to a mall, which is terrific, and uh, uh, yeah, it's a member of Air Force has had a number of members over the year. We're still seeking more. We're trying to get more people excited about the uh, being involved and what we're doing. Like you are doing great. Yeah, that's that's uh, at least we want to make make it look like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's coming together. There's all kinds of little things, but uh, they're little things right now. Good. Well, you've been doing a great job. So, anyways, thank you very much for your time oh, today. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. And thank you, you guys. This is Beth with the Talk of San Diego. This is a Grumman F3F-2, another World War II plane. A little bit smaller, one passenger. If you look at it, pretty sure uh, these are actually guns that would shoot bullets out of it. I'm kind of perplexed. How does it not hit the big propeller? I don't know. Google it. Hi guys, and we're back here at Wings Over Gillespie Field at the air show. And as you see standing right here with me is Rolf, and this is his airplane. Please tell me about this plane. Actually, it belongs to our club, okay. the Associated Glider Clubs of Southern California, okay. in existence since 1931, and we fly regularly at Hakumba Airport, east of here, about 65 miles, okay. and we do instruction in these. This is a two-seater, instructor in the back, student in the front. This is how people learn to fly. People like Sullenberger, who landed in the Hudson, Okay. Yes, he yes. learned to fly gliders. And that's how he put it in as smoothly as he did, because this he did, because this is how you learn aerodynamics, airflows, lift, thermals, mountain wave, and orographic lift, like a Tory Pines or almost anywhere else. So hence the word glider. Um, 
So how much does something like this weigh? Because it looks really little. About 800 pounds, 850 pounds. Uh, some are lighter than that, around 400 pounds and even lighter than that. But between 400 to 600 and even 800 is a fairly normal weight. This can carry two people up to 240 pounds and so it can carry quite a load as well. So 480. Basically yeah. each okay, gotcha. Yeah. Two people. Two people are above average weight, shall we say. Okay, so looking at the plane, it's a unique design. I don't really see a lot like an engine or anything. So no. when you're up there, how does that all work? Well, it's the same difference between power boats and sailboats. This is like a sailplane and we use air currents to lift it. However, if you look back behind you there, you see a winch there. This yellow thing is a diesel winch with a big drum and a long cable. We attach the one end of the cable to the front of the glider, or sailplane, and the other end is on the drum there. Then the operator starts the drum rolling and very rapidly the glider goes up into the air very steeply at about I'd say 35 to 45 degrees and climbing to the air and we typically depending on the length of the runway get about 40 percent of the length of the runway in altitude and where we fly out in Akamba we can easily get well over a thousand feet every time then we go to a ridge nearby where we get lift up flowing air having to go over the ridge then we fly in front of the ridge and we can go back and forth and gliders have been known to stay up for very long times in Hawaii for over 24 hours. But here typically, let's say, we mostly are limited by the capacity of our bladder and the ability to uh, excuse ourselves after the flight. That usually means five or six hours, mostly not more than that. But during that time, you can make a fairly long flight. These will go fairly fast, but there's good lift. They'll go up to about 80, 90, 100 and fly sort of porpoise-like where the lift is and go long distance across country. Almost every Saturday people make fairly long glides from Southern California to other parts of, the, of Southern California and Arizona and Nevada, etc. Wow, okay, very interesting. Now, gliders have been known to go as high as almost 50,000 feet. There's oxygen in most of them, and they can stay up there for a while until the people in it, they have to be dressed almost like astronauts with a special flight suit, they have to have oxygen, and of course it gets very cold up there. However, they fly higher than the airlines fly, I mean they can, for record attempts. They've also been going as long as, let's say, 15, 1600 miles in a day. So they can uh, do some remarkable things for an aircraft that does not have an engine and is strictly doing this with the ability of utilizing air currents. You have to be very knowledgeable about it and experienced and then you can stay virtually as long as you want and fly as far as you want. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much for your You're time. Quite welcome. It's extremely informative, uh, this glider. I um, actually didn't know that there was anything out there like it. So yes, there is. Thank you very much. This is much. the real sport flying. Awesome. And this is Beth with the Talk of San Diego. Now this is a sweet plane. It's a 1959 Beechcraft Super 18 and a Grand Champion. Hello. One of the planes that you'll be seeing flying here this weekend is the Osprey, the Marines Osprey. This thing is huge. This is probably what you see when you're driving down the 15 and you get all distracted and you're like, what is that? That is one of these ginormous planes. Ever stuck in traffic on a Friday afternoon, ready to get home? This will clear things up. This Aero Vodachodi L39 Albatross can carry two passengers and goes more around 609 miles per hour. Now this you might see in Top Gun. Look at this beautiful plane. This is a 1945 G44A Widgeon. So what's special about this plane is not only is it amphibious, meaning it can land on both land and water, is that there was only 276 of them made back in the 1940s and 50s. Um, you might find someone like Jimmy Buffett that does own a plane similar to this. Very nice. Might get one soon.
I'm here with Muriel. Muriel is the only one left of her kind. There are 14 built and this is the last surviving airplane. It's a 1935 Lockheed Electra L-10E. Now what's unique about Muriel is she's actually going to circumnavigate the globe soon doing the same flight path that Amelia Earhart also flew. And who knows, they may find Amelia. I'm Beth and I'm back here at the Gillespie Air Show and I'm here with Angela Tekinoff and she is with M4. I, that I just got out of the flight simulation and would you tell us a little bit about M4 and what you guys do? Well, the M4 flight simulator has five different rides that you, should, you can choose from. Each ride has a different number of barrel rolls that you'll do in the ride. Okay. So our F-16 fighter jet, which is a great ride, has five barrel rolls. Our pods do 360 degrees um, in these barrel rolls. You are strapped in as if you are in a jet. We have a four-point harness. Um, just got to make sure you empty your pockets and have strap in and just enjoy the ride. Okay, and are you guys local and um, are you... Actually, um, we, we keep the, the simulator in Long Beach, but our crew is off from Catalina Island. Okay. So we, we love to do air shows and we're also available for special events as well. Um, we have our own air show in Catalina coming September 29th. The simulator will be there as well. Um, so come out and join us for that show. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I loved it. I'm sure the kids love it. And uh, thank you for having us. It was fun. Oh, well, I'm glad you could make it. Thank you. And this is the Talk of San Diego. Thank you for joining us, the Talk of San Diego, here at the Gillespie Field Air Show. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I'm Beth Hagendorf, and don't forget to like my personality page on Facebook. And now I'm going to go find the rest of this jet plane. Look at this beautiful plane. This is a 1945 Grumman G44A Widgeon. Oh, it's nice that you read the card. <laughs> It's nice that you keep looking at the card. Okay, okay. Hi, this is Beth, and this is the Talk of San Diego. We are here at the Wings Over Gillespie Air Show, and right now I am standing under a huge Navy aircraft. We are going to be talking to some of the pilots, some Navy divers, uh, some of the people that put on the air show, and, um... That's about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot the third person. Oh, aviation author. Okay. And you were so close, too. I know. I was almost done. All right, we're going to get out of here. Yeah, okay. we're running out of daylight. And... and I'm sorry. I should start over. <laughs> okay. Where are we at? <laughs> <laughs>